Yeah. Space Lord Mother Mother. Hello folks, welcome back. For I'm the one. Well, I really can't say that. But I am the Space Hobo Tom. Yep, listen to a little Space Lord music back there. And I'll let you folks know why. Because I went through it. Wait, let me. There we go. I had to break open the seal of the old helmet. Because I. Oh, wow, it really does echo with this thing on. There we go. A little more comfortable. I want to go see a movie for a change. You can almost see my facial expression because I'm used to wearing a. Well. But yeah, let's see if I can show you this. I want to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a little preview of what the Space Hobo has to go through just to see one movie. Roll footage. Hello folks, for I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom, and I am off to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. I got my illegal movie snacks, because I don't feel like paying for stuff, got my ticket, and I'll show you what the CMX theater looks like, because they have their own, like, restaurant and bar there too. It's kind of amazing. I'll be back. Bye. See, so this is the... CMX Theater. Very quickly, I'll show you what it looks like in here. To hide my contraband, though. So let's see. Mm. I told you it's a neat-looking place. Borrowed wings. One girl. Yep, those are the perils that I have to go through. And although there is, wait, let me open this again. And there is a very nice movie theater, the CMX 12 here in Daytona Beach, formerly the Cobb Movie Theater. So that was pretty good. And let's see, you know what? Can't do a video without <laughs> the space. Hobo music. Alright folks, that was some old school music there. Deep purple. Classic stuff. Let me take off. Ah! Oh. Classic space helmet. You can tell because it has a nice clear visor. You can see through. See? Yep. But let me talk about... The Guardians of the Galaxy. First thing I realized is that this is the most neon colored shirt I have. I have to get one of those. I see a bunch of them at work. You're going to see that that's the manufacturer's tag on my helmet. So, yeah, it is going to look a little funky like a monkey. But no, tonight, I figure, you know what? I've worked too hard. It's time to spend some of my ill-gotten gains, or my earnings, as I should say it. So I went to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. Is that upside down? Okay. And it's a mirror, too. Yep, Guardians of the Galaxy. Cobb Theater 12. 12 bucks, I guess, is the going rate for tickets. It was I know that was my seat, F-16. So... Um, I, think, I guess that's the going rate. I know there's taxes added on. But yeah, a little bit of what this movie theater looks like. Because apparently, you actually don't have to wear pants. And you can put your, and you can obviously put your seat up and, and bring it. Oh, wait a second. That's not, a, that's not the right picture. Oh, well. But yeah, um, the big thing is that you can always smuggle in contraband. Because God knows they have watermelon everything. Ramon dots, I'll plug them, whatever. 
But yeah, I should not show people what my legs look like. It's pretty bad. Oh yeah, and in space, they give you fruity, delicious drinks because you have to stay hydrated somehow. With a little bit of sugar and vitamins because space does bad things to you. As we see in the movie. Enough about that. It's about Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Actually, I enjoyed it. I would say on my normal food, food scale, this would be a surf and turf movie. Now the reason why I say that is that I'll tell you what this would have actually been the one of the perfect date night movies I've seen in a while. And the fact there's action for me. So actually some pretty sad sappy moments for her, whoever magical her would be. One day there will be a show and there will be a girlfriend or a woman doing this, helping me with this review. Until then, we'll see. Um, yeah, so this is definitely a Mofongo, well, not surf and surf movie. It's all thinking. So I haven't changed that scale in a while. One day I'll get back to that. But yeah, definitely a surf and turf movie rating. Really good. I do recommend seeing it, especially for the value of 12 and a, might as well be 12 and a quarter. Uh, if you're not doing anything, I do recommend it. It has a lot of action in it. it has some really good oh, little fluffy animals. I mean, I just could not imagine anyone doing any bad things to if I can this little fluffy creature right there look how fluffy and flubby and tubby and cute she is the hobo cat so yeah uh, it starts off a really brief synopsis they might as well have called this Guardians of the Galaxy 3 the tale of Rocket Raccoon because that's almost what it was it starts off you're at nowhere um, they're setting up the Guardians of the Galaxy workshop, I guess. Peter Quill gets drunk because from Endgame, he lost Gamora, which was the love of his life. Or fell off, yeah, fell off a magical cliff because she was murdered by her father Thanos from Avenger Endgame Part 2, I think. I don't know, I haven't seen those Endgame movies yet. I've heard mixed things about them. And I don't feel like spending the money to buy the DVDs. I do like the Marvel movies. Not not all of them are great. Most of them are pretty good. Iron Man, the first Iron Man was awesome. But and then there's Guardians of the Galaxy is just fun. And I will say this, Guardians of the Galaxy has one of the best soundtracks on movies. Period, using non-original scored music. <coughs> Even some of the original scoring they use. Like for the scenes that are really appropriate, they give mood, ambiance, it's fun, it's sad, you cry, you cheer, you want to get up and dance, you want to go run through the theater naked. No, do not run through the theater naked. That's bad. It starts off, uh, you're on Nowhere, Guardians of the Galaxy, they're setting up shot, Peter Quill's drunk, always a bonus. Um, Rocket Raccoon. Uh, they get attacked by Warlock, who, if you saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2, was created by that golden race to hunt down the Guardians of the Galaxy. Quick synopsis of it. Rocket Raccoon, he gets shot in the chest with something. Realize that he has a kill switch on his heart, because remember, he's somewhat, he's somewhat manufactured. And the whole story, for the most part, the whole synopsis is, is that the Guardians of the Galaxy do everything they can to help their one friend Rocket Raccoon, who is general an asshole throughout the first two movies. If you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy 1, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, you know Rocket Raccoon just tries to be a, a complete 
jerk to everyone. And now he's and now he's been shot and, and the Guardians of the Galaxy really do show their love for him. And they say, we're going to save our buddy Rock, Rocky Raccoon. Thumbs up, because raccoons are cute, flubby, tubby animals. Or can be. If they're not rabid. Rabid raccoons are bad. But yeah, um, so they go through, they go to the one place to find the file on how to get the, the password. Then they have to go to the planet. And then in between this, you see the different stages of Rocky Raccoon. You see him in a cage full of other raccoons. So if he's the one raccoon that's like, oh, what's this, a human man? And then you see how they do the surgery on him. And he goes into the unique animal cage. I'll tell you what, that bunny was creepy as anything. The otter with mechanical arms was freaky enough. The walrus on, reel, on wheels was weird. That bunny rabbit, with a face mask, like bang! You talk like a child, and yes, like a raccoon. My name is Fleur, because I'm like I'm a Fleur. So yeah, that bunny was kind of weird. Again, with a six six legs, a six leg six mechanical leg bunny, with an alien face mask on. That was just weird. But if you got over that, again, it shows like the built the budding friendship. Uh, Lily was the name of the otter. Tooth was the name of the walrus. Floor was was the, the pinhead bunny. Of course, he had Rocket Raccoon. And it showed what happened to him at various stages. So then he's introduced. And he tells the person, then he tells the one, um, the evolutionist, how to fix his one machine. And then the evolutionist is like, well, why can't a stupid raccoon do something that, see something so obvious that I could not? It happens. Um... So then he says, yeah, I'm going to get the brain of that raccoon. But Rocket Raccoon smart enough. He makes a key. He releases himself. All his buddies get shot, though. And that was so sad because he goes through a nice story about, oh, I saw the sky and I'm going to steal a rock and we're all going to leave and it's going to be so cool. And then they all get shot. And that was like a real, genuine, heart-tugging moment. Again, this is while he's like in that, like, coma on, on the table in the Guardians Galaxy ship which looks utterly amazing it's like they redid their original ship but put like like spheres it looks like almost the Orville from well the TV series Orville and what a command carrier kind of looks like from Farscape. So it's a weird hybrid ship. It looked pretty cool though. Um, you have Gamora, uh, Warlock and his mother. And of course they go through, they go so, he, so main thing is, whole overarching story plan is we see ro the, the origins of Rocket Raccoon. The very beginning, all the way through really to the end and even the end credits. And as you get closer to the end, the Guardians, of course, they always fight Drax, Dave Batista, number one. Um, Mantis is great. Nebulon is actually re a really solid character. They go into really good character development. Uh, Peter Quill still running. He doesn't want to go home. Nebulon is just an ice bitch. Uh, Drax is just Drax the Destroyer. He just wants. He has no metaphors. He just does what he wants to do. Uh, Mantis is way too empathetic towards everything. And Groot. I am Groot. Although he does say, I love you at the very end. So he learns to say more than I am Groot. He learns to say I love you, which is pretty cool. I'll tell you what, Groot looked jacked for some reason. Uh, when you see Gamora comes back, she's now one of the re uh, Reavers. Reapers. Ravengers, that's right, Ravengers. Along with Sylvester Stallone, makes his little cameo there. So it's, it's pretty cool. Again, they so they go to the beginning, Rock, Rocket Raccoon gets shot, go to the one space station, they find out, oh, well, only this place has it. They go to this planet, they find the evil evolutionist, they get the passcode from the guy's head, and they realize that he's on a spaceship with other kids, 
And they, of course, being the Guardians of the Galaxy, have to get rid of him. Save the day, they crash nowhere into him. Save a bunch of kids. Save a bunch of furry animals. Pretty cool stuff. So, really, and then uh, at the very end, they all get together. Peter Quill says, you know what? I'm tired of running. I'm going to go home and go see my grandfather. Good for him. Uh, Mantis says, you know what? I have to, I have to leave too. Drax stays because Drax is the only one that can that can communicate with his kids. With his childlike mentality. So he's really good with the kids. Nebulon is now the, I guess, governess of nowhere. The one guy finally... <laughs> learned to master the arrow. He had the psychic dog who finally got called good dog. Was very happy about that. Um, Rocket Raccoon became Captain Rocket Raccoon, leader of the new Guardians of the Galaxy with Groot on um, that one girl, the arrow guy, and a dog. And then Peter Quill is just sitting at home eating a bowl of cereal, talking about mowing the lawn with his grandfather. So, yeah. Honestly, it went quick. I think it's listed at 2 hours and 45 minutes. It did not feel like that. I looked at my watch. I'm like, oh, wow, it's. 11 o'clock almost so that's a good that's always a good feeling when the movie feels shorter than it actually is you don't feel like you're sitting like I'll tell you what I saw I saw Abe Lincoln or Link, uh, Lincoln years ago and that felt like like it was 20 hours long even though it was only four just dragged on forever and I know they're two completely, completely different movies but again if you have to go on a date night gentlemen and ladies I definitely recommend Guardians of the Galaxy. Fun movie, action-packed, heart-tugging moments, comedy. Um, I think the only reason why this movie got an R rated is because they dropped like the f bomb once, and I and I was pleasantly surprised at that because they curse so infrequently, or they do it with such comedic timing. It doesn't feel like they're cursing, but when he dropped the f bomb again, just once, whoa! It's called impact. Of course, he's driving a car um, on alternate Earth. Some other highlights. Um, again, just the way they 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 don't get along. The way they they really truly bicker like a family does, which is which is pretty cool. And the action's good. Not necessarily over the top. Peter Quill almost dies. He gets stuck in vacuum. He'd be dead anyway. Except for then, Warlock kind of redeems himself. They like they have like a pet dog. Oh yeah, Warlock becomes a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy too. They have like some pet critter thing. He pees a lot for some reason. It's kind of funny. Um, the War Pig. And again, the thing that really made this movie. And I have to truly applaud them as a soundtrack. 80s, 90s, 2000s even. Which is weird because I thought Peter Quill got kidnapped in like the 70s. Or early 80s. Indeed. But yeah. The soundtrack matched it perfectly when they played modern music that fit the theme. When they had a more instrumental choral background piece, really fit, really fit the theme. Um, I'll tell you what, that was a good movie. I don't like spending money, but you know what? I would highly recommend going to see this movie. I think it honestly is a perfect date night movie for guys. You have action, not pretty consistently. I mean, there's enough lull where. It, it's not hi, 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 and you get burned out, but there's like there's peaks and valleys. There's the little Mexican wave thing. But yeah, other than that, I highly recommend this movie. Well, it's time to go back to outer space. So, being the space hobo that I am, I will properly suit myself up, and I'll see everyone later. Remember, like, share, comment, subscribe.